players around the league can say they play and work on the same field. Boston Cannons face-off specialist Joe Nardella has a unique position of coaching on the Harvard men's lacrosse team during the week and suiting up for the hometown Cannons on the weekend. Let's take a look at this week's Cannons Full Contact Player Profile. I, it's awesome, honestly. It's great to have everything centralized. Um, it's cool because I get to train here, and then, like, you know, you're training by yourself on the field alone some nights. And then finally, when it's game day, it's kind of like a little deja vu action where you're like, wow, there's a lot of people in the stands now. Um, but I try to block out the outside distractions and try to just simulate that practice atmosphere when I'm out here by myself just getting extra work in, so it couldn't be more perfect. for me would be getting up around 6.45, hitting snooze once or twice, getting up at 7, having a breakfast sandwich, coming down here to the office, starting off with some film in the morning, cutting up or watching whatever we need to, um, staff meetings, then we get the players coming in sometimes throughout the day to watch a little film for us. Sometimes I come down here, work with my face-off guys, um, if they can get down for some extra work. Then we usually have team meeting around 3 where we watch the film that we cut up and talk about as a staff. Um, with the players and then practice three to five then usually sometimes a, a lift or a little extra work afterwards um, I try to get some stuff in on my own and then head home around six or seven each night. Back of the net, Cheek under ten seconds to go in the first quarter, Cheek darts in front, the bounce shot and he scores! Honestly we had a it's real senior heavy team um, we were in every game, just sometimes the ball didn't bounce our way, but the boys worked and fought hard all season. That's really, really all you could ask for. We finished with a huge win at Brown, who's hosting an NCAA tournament game, and then just came up a little short against Yale. Um, I think, <laughs> I'm a little biased, but I think we should have gotten the NCAA tournament, but um, sometimes that's the way it goes. I'm from Syracuse, New York, so I personally don't think I have an accent. I tend to think some of the people up here have accents, um, but I guess it's just where you're from. Um, maybe I picked up a little bit of a Jersey accent. I sure hope not um, during my time down at Rutgers, but yeah. Getting the guys ready to go for the opening game is the most important thing, just getting everybody uh, riled up and excited. Coach Beck really stresses us pushing transition after face-offs, really gets to on us about getting up the field once the ball's on the ground, getting it in and out of our stick quick. When you have a guy like Joe Nardella that does that uh, so well for us uh, facing off, and we felt confident to uh, be able to have those possessions. The University of New Jersey, yeah. So Rutgers was a great experience for me. Um, we kind of rebuilt the program from the ground up. Um, I came in with a whole new coaching staff, um, and really we just had to change the culture down there. It had gone through a few years of not like losing seasons, not being in any postseason play. Um, by my junior year, we made it to the Big East tournament, and then this year you see they're back. They almost made, had a shot at the NCAAs along with Harvard. They were probably one of the first teams out. Had, they had a great year. I think they finished up 11-6, and six, made it to the Big Ten final. So um, big things to come down in Piscataway. We just take it one day at a time, kind of like win the day mentality. We got to come in. It starts every day in practice. We got to win, win the day in practice and just build from there. Once we play Met Wagner, it's, we just got to go 1-0 that day. We're not looking ahead to Virginia. Really was into hockey growing up as well as lacrosse. Um, probably a little bit more serious about hockey. Played travel with some of my best friends from the time I was seven, eight years old all the way to my senior year of high school. But around ninth or 10th grade, I kind of realized that um, lacrosse would be a real, more realistic um, path to play in college for me. Um, and I, I love the sport. Again, I was playing with a lot of my best friends, so it made it easy to love. We all played on our high school and club team together, so it made, our, made it easy for our parents. Um, we all loved competing together and it kind of just ended up being lacrosse that I chose. Um, I still love hockey. Uh, 
I don't want to admit that my lacrosse is my favorite sport, but I think it has passed hockey as my favorite sport. The fans loved it tonight. It was a, a great, great atmosphere, great crowd. This is all you can ask for from the home guys. You know? Oh, this is about the coolest thing it's for a month. Honestly, that's what you, what you play for. That's what it's all about, you know, like inspiring the young kids. I once was one of those kids sitting at the Dome when I was five, six years old watching guys like the Powells play, and that's really what motivated me to want to be great and play on that stage um, as I got older. So being able to be that inspiration for those kids is what you play for, really. Jack, I think from looking at this season's player profiles, we're finding more and more players who are making a full-time living off of lacrosse whether it's coaching, training, development. It's a big departure from the past, I believe. In my day, there was really only room for a couple of guys to both work in the industry and be playing in the league. So as the sport continues to grow, there'll be more and more opportunity both on the field and off the field.